Hey guys, Cyril here, and welcome to my first video. Today, we're going on a photo walk. I didn't really struggle with what to do when my first video topics came up, but I uh, immediately went back to the thoughts of my childhood. Uh, when I first got my camera, it was a big deal to me, and I oftentimes went out into my own neighborhood and sort of just took pictures of anything, from a flower bed to a cat to a dog. Um, so that's why I'm out here trying to teach you guys exactly what's happening, exactly how my process works. So doing photo walks, I try to be as least intrusive as I can possibly be while still getting decent pictures. Um, I don't like to be around people while I'm photographing for whatever reason. It just makes me uncomfortable. It's a lot easier to just do my job if I'm walking around. So this is pretty cool. I found some really bright hornets. You guys see them? They're so pretty. I'm gonna attempt to take some photos of them. I think they're fighting. Okay, so I got a couple of really good ones of the hornet's nest. Um, I didn't want to be too intrusive though, so... I had to apologize to the hornets. I felt really bad. They almost attacked me, so I had to run away. Be careful where you walk. Oh my God, what was that? All right guys, so at this point, I'm real hot and sweaty. So I'm gonna head home and we're gonna go look at these photos and talk about them. Okay, so now that I'm away from the wilderness and the snakes and spiders, uh, I'd like to discuss a little bit about what just happened. As you guys know, I only have one camera. So, well, as most of you know, I only have one camera. So anytime I was not filming myself, I was shooting. And that was the majority of the time. So you missed a lot. So let me catch you guys up on what to look for, when to look, and how exactly to frame it and shoot it. Photo walks generally can take place at any time, but a lot of the time you look for locations based on greenery, on flowers, on water, on anything that you find interesting is perfect. Go out and shoot that, okay? And then there's when to look. Usually around the times of sunset is a great time to shoot. It's called golden hour. A lot of photographers use it very often. You don't want to get in the habit of relying on it for your shots but you definitely want to get into the habit of at least using it every once in a while. Another time you can look for is rain. Right after it rains, there are raindrops, there is dew, there are bugs out. There's a lot of things that you can find that you may not be able to find during the sunlight of the golden hour. So look for that too. Uh, I think there's a lot of different variations that you can really look for to make your photos unique and interesting. So I'm going to show you five photos from today that I think are the best ones and kind of explain and help you guys emulate the same results that I got shooting today. So first shot. This shot is of a hornet. I hope it looks like a hornet. I'm not sure exactly the breed of hornet. The species? Breed. It doesn't matter. Anyways, uh, the real challenge with photographing bugs is trying to get them in focus and making them look larger than life. So the first thing I did with this in post was to crop it and zoom in. Another thing you can do is sharpen the photo to make sure the bug is not blurry. You don't want your focus to be blurry, especially when shooting bugs because it just makes your photograph look lousy. So make sure you have a sharp focus on the bug. That is your main focus when shooting bugs or when shooting any sort of animal really. You don't want them to be out of focus because then it just looks like you messed up and you don't want that.
While the real star of this photo is the actual star, the one and only star, the sun. Now, as that's not factually true, perhaps it's the closest one to the earth. I'm pretty sure that's factually true. I'll ask a scientist later after the video. Anyways, uh, the interesting thing about this photo to me is that it's sort of a seascape of leaves looking to be brightened up by this huge ginormous light in the background. It's so beautiful. You can see all these streaking colors coming off of the leaves, all these highlights and lowlights kind of mixing together. Uh, the distortion on the lens is really beautiful at the bottom of the image. It just kind of curls in and really adds to that nice flowy motion of the leaves. I brought up the highlights quite a bit because I feel like the effect of the photo is really increased by the, uh, the intensity of the light and how bright it is. So after shooting two leafy photos, I decided to move on to an earthen texture, something of a Mars type look. And for this, I found a rock on the ground next to a bunch of rubble, next to a bunch of stone. Uh, it was perfect. So I set up, I set my camera on the ground, I aimed, and I fired. So for this look, I was really looking for that earthen texture, so I heightened the yellows a lot. I brought them up, as well as I heightened the exposure, I believe, and I darkened the contrast, just so you would get that feel of bright sun hitting this really hot rock that was crisp to the touch, but in actuality it was not. This image is a bright sun hitting this one little piece of weed, or hay. I guess I'll just refer to it as hay for now. This one bit of hay at the very top at like sort of an angle. And so it was so bright that I had to turn my highlights down a little bit so you could still see the texture. See, as a photographer, you often know that Things like the sun are your best friends. You always want to highlight some subjects. You always want to let them sort of pop. And for number five, that's a huge deal. The highlights in this photo are really what carry it, what make it an interesting photo. Aside from the depth of field, aside from the colors, it's the highlights around the leaves that are really bringing your attention towards the photo, that are really making you go, wow, that's a great photo, right? So what you want to do to get these kind of looks is really just continue to keep shooting at the golden hour when the sun is hitting these objects. That is the most important thing you can do. Sort of real quick tips to help you guys shoot these kind of photos to help you guys really learn, okay? To hammer these concepts in, you need wind, golden hour, rain, anything really unique, any sort of time that you think, oh man, photos would be great right now. A lot of people take a, pictures of the sunset when the sunset is just hitting the peaks. Those are great examples. Follow their lead, go ahead and get out there, take some photos, see what you get, experiment with what you like. Always look for exactly what you love or what you want to shoot. I have lots of examples if you guys want to see. Just shoot me in the comments below. Let me know what you guys want to see next. I'm excited to work for you guys and with you guys. So just remember guys, if you want to continue to see this face on your YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for immediate notifications, and uh, really let me know what you guys want to see next. What do you guys want me to do? Uh, like I said before, I'll let you guys vote on anything I'm doing, anything I want to do. Uh, go check out my other YouTube video. Go check out my socials in the description below. Hit the subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you next video.